Romans chapter 5. So, we'll go ahead and get into this scripture and then we'll move on to Hebrews here in just a second. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Praise God, somebody. Amen. 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 For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Ooh, praise, praise God. God, praise God. Praise God, hallelujah. That was a lot of words that maybe we don't understand. <laughs> now, if anybody remembers last Sunday, I dare not ask if anybody remembers what happened last Sunday. Uh, come on, I've learned my lesson too many times for that. Uh, from yeah. Wednesday night Bible study to Wednesday night Bible study. What did we talk about last Wednesday night? <laughs> Anyways, that's all right. But I'll tell you what happened last Sunday. We came collectively to the altar in repentance to God. Amen. 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 Yes, we remember. Yes. I would say a good 95% of the church was up here in these altars crying out for repentance. Yes? Amen. Did it stick? Oh, yeah. Man, watch yeah. out now. Thank God. Did yeah. it fall back into the same old mess this week? Oh, I hope not. Or did you repent once and for all, just like Christ died for you once and for all? So that you can have victory over the enemy. Mm, praise God. All right. Well, the Bible says in verse 8, go ahead and throw in that verse 8 back up there again. So chapter 5, verse 8. This word commendeth, uh, but God commendeth his love toward us. Now I want you to see this. This is very interesting because there is both current tense and past tense in the same verse. This is interesting. But God shows, Amen. God proves, yeah. God gives his love toward us. That is current. That is right now. That is something that he does day in and day out, over and over and over again. It wasn't that God showed it one time and that was it. If you missed it, you missed it. If you didn't get in the waters for trouble, you ain't getting it. No, God commended his love toward us. God proves his love day in and day out towards Amen. us Amen. that while we were, were, yeah, were yeah. Oh, there's that past tense. Praise God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his one and only son to die for us, to take our place, poured out his wrath, his punishment on the old rugged cross for me and for you once for all time. Amen. Romans here is talking to some Christian folk, and so it's assuming that you were sinners, meaning you're not anymore. Did you repent last Sunday or didn't you? Yes, yes. Boy. Yeah. So should you be in that mess anymore? No. no. To repent means to change your mind, to change your direction, literally to change the way you think. Yes. Not just ask forgiveness. Not just cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. Please forgive me. Oh, that's part of it. But then you get up from this altar and you go back a changed person, a new creation, something new, something different. That old sinful man is left right here at the altar. Amen. Lord. And you're somebody new. Amen. The things you used to do, you don't do anymore. The way you used to talk, you don't talk anymore. The way you used to think, you don't think anymore. The way you used to act, you don't act that way anymore. Yeah. Amen. God's put a song in your heart. God's put a verse in your mind. And you every day wake up praising God for another day. Praise the Lord. It's different. Because you've repented. And God has cleansed you, has forgiven you, has changed you. For God proves his love towards you. And that while you were yet a sinner, you didn't have to get cleaned up first. 
You didn't have to get cleaned up first. Well, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. You don't have to get cleaned up first. God takes you just as you are. You think he doesn't know who you are? He's not surprised by the sins you've committed. He knows what you were born with. He knows the situations you're in. He knows what you're walking through. He knows the thoughts in your head and the thoughts in your heart. God's word says that it's all oh, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide even a son of the bone and the marrow, discerning the thoughts and intents yep. of the heart. Yes. God knows what's going on in your mind and in your heart in a secret place where nobody else knows. Here's the thing. You can't get yourself clean. There's one big good reason that you don't have to clean yourself up first to come to God. It's because you can't. Right. Oh, you can try. Come on. You can go to a program. You can go to a meeting. You can go to a whatever kind of club or whatever. You can go off into the weekend or a month and try to clean yourself up and set yourself right. And, oh, it may work for a week. It may work for a month. It may work for a few days. You may not smell like you used to. <laughs> oh, but that temptation's still there. Yeah. You may not look like you used to. You got cleaned up, took a shower, put on new clothes. Yeah, you look good. Oh, but deep down, same you're old. still the same old wretched man. Yeah. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me? Oh, there is Jesus. And therein is Jesus. God proves his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ took on the wrath of God for you Hallelujah. and for me. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you understand that this morning? Do you get that this morning? We're going to jump over to Hebrews and we're going to talk about it here in just a second. I'm going to tell you, you can go ahead and go to Hebrews if you'd like to. Uh, Hebrews, what is it, son? Chapter 9? I believe, yeah, go on if you want to, to Hebrews chapter 9. In the Old Testament, if you go and start reading somewhere around Exodus, read Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers even, Deuteronomy, if you just read the Old Testament, you'll find out very quickly what God has done for you differently today through Jesus Christ than what he did given the law to the people in the Old Testament. Now here's the thing. They didn't have no law. They didn't know how to live and how to act. Matter of fact, when you read uh, some of those laws, you'll find out that uh, uh, Mo well, Moses had broken those laws. You find out that uh, 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 the people before him, Noah had broken those laws. Uh, Jacob and, and, uh, uh, and all that... Abraham, Isaac, you know the God that says I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, those, those three fellows didn't quite have the law. And when you read what God says about don't do this, don't do that, don't marry this one, don't have that one, don't uh, have idols over here, don't do that, you'll find out real quick they was doing all of it. You look back and say, but God, wasn't Abraham? Wasn't Isaac? Wasn't you? Weren't they? Didn't they marry? Didn't they? What's going on here? And God says, no, no, no. I'm going to give you this law, and now you know better. Yeah. Now you're without excuse. And now the law I give you is holy, just, and good. Yeah. It's a perfect law. And if you'll keep it, you'll find life in the law. Mm -hmm. However, God knows you ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. So then he began to say, now, here's the law, and here's the way to find forgiveness. From when you break that law. Get you a ram. <laughs> slaughter it. Put your hands on the head of the ram. Confess your sins. Transferring your sins to that ram. Or that bull. Or that lamb. Or whatever it is that you had to sacrifice. The right offering for the right issue. Guilt offering. Sin offering. Whatever it was. A vow offering. Whatever. Transfer your mess. To the head of that thing. And then cut its throat right there in front of the temple. Bring with that thing, that, that ram or that bull or that lamb or whatever it is, that go bring with it some choice flour. Bring with it some olive oil. 
bring with it some wine, bring with it some spices, bring with it some various other things, and sacrifice it to the Lord on the altar. Wow. Anybody guilty of anything? <laughs> Anybody commit the sin from last week to this week? Anybody let your temper get the best of you or road rage or that person at Walmart that just couldn't do what they're supposed to do? Okay, okay. Is it only me? It was just me? Okay. <laughs> I hear you. I see you. God sees that hand. Any of your kids just drive you up the wall? Okay, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll be in good there. Anyway. You imagine. Last week you came up here asking God to forgive you and you, you cried out in repentance. This week, bring your rams in, bring your lambs in, bring your, bring your flour and your olive oil and your, come on, bring it in, let's get old fire going up here in the baptism one. Offer it to the Lord. Oh, praise God, aren't you glad you ain't going to do that? Amen. And then on top of that, once a year, there would be the day of atonement. You know, during a lot of these things, they wouldn't eat. They'd fast and consecrate themselves, wash and clean themselves up, make themselves right before the Lord. They'd abstain from relationships, husbands and wives. They'd cry out to the Lord and confess their sins. They'd stand up and they'd read sometimes the whole book of the law. You think the pastor reads a lot of scripture up here on Sunday. Come on. They'd stand up there and read the whole book of the law. Anybody want to hear all of Deuteronomy this morning? How about all of Leviticus? Ooh. Praise God, he's delivered me. Hallelujah. But there it is. One day a year they would find forgiveness and they would ask for the lamb and then they would send the other lamb out into the wilderness so that the sins would leave, so to speak, the camp. But any other time throughout the year, if you were unclean, you had to go outside the camp. Think about this. And I want to get a little, a little specific here, but if you spit on somebody that was unclean. If a woman had a menstrual cycle, she was unclean. If, if she had said on something and then her husband came back and said on that, he was now unclean too. Her uncleanliness was transferred to him. He had to go outside the camp. Y'all was unclean until evening or unclean until whatever day it was. And then you had to wash yourself and come back into camp and offer the right sacrifices. You understand this morning that I believe most of y'all folks wouldn't be here if we were still under the Old Testament. You'd have to be outside the camp. I might be out there with you. Crazy, ain't it? Why? Because in the Old Testament, God demanded holiness. God demanded holiness. Has anything changed? Oh, boy. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His attitude ain't changed. His character ain't changed. He still demands holiness. What happened? Jesus came. That's right. Break Jesus God. came. And the old law was done away with so that the new law could be in effect. The new law is Jesus Christ. The new law is Jesus Christ. He came and did every last uh, uh, dotted every I and crossed every T of the old law. It is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And we now have a, a better covenant with better promises Amen. through Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know if I'm getting Hebrews this morning. It's all right. It's in there. Go home and read it. I even took out a chapter for you because it was so much. It's really Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. I just put it in 9 and 10 this morning. My son looked at it and said, oh, that's the whole chapter. Then he said, oh, no, there's two of them. I said, it's all right, son. I took one out. Hebrews goes on to tell us that we have this great high priest that once a year the high priest in the Old Testament they can enter into the Holy of Holies and offer forgiveness. But Christ when he died oh he entered a better place not made by human hands. He's up there in heaven at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me and you. Amen. He's up there in a better place. This stuff was just shadows of things to come. Right. Oh, but Christ, he's the fulfillment of it all. Amen. And he's up there and he's offering a, 
Do you understand? He's, he's offering intercessory prayer. He's going to God on your behalf. And what gives him authority to do that? His blood. The fact that he was the all-sufficient sacrifice. In the Old Testament, man, it, in the Old Testament, you think if they offered a bull once, it was good enough? They wouldn't have to offer another one if it was good enough, right? That's how that works. If, if I offer this ram and it forgives me of my sins, then I'm forgiven. It's done. But no, they had to do it again. And again. And again. And again. And then once a year, the whole camp was cleansed. And then they start over and do it again. And again. And again. And if you read it, they sprinkle blood on the altar. They sprinkle blood on the curtains. They sprinkle blood on the holy place. They sprinkle blood on the priests. They sprinkle blood on the people. They sprinkle blood on the on the, the law itself when they wrote that thing out. They had to put blood everywhere. Why? Because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. However, also, without the shedding of blood, the testament can't take an effect. You can put a, a will and testament right now, but as long as you're alive, I get nothing. That's fine. He said, Pastor James, I've left you $50 in my will. I appreciate it, brother. Here, here it is. Bring it on. Well, you don't get it till I die. <laughs> well, when's that going to be? <laughs> I can take that will down to the courthouse and say, Adam owes me $50. And they'll say, well, bring in his death certificate and we'll get it paid. Well, he ain't dead yet. Then they laugh me out the courthouse. <laughs> What are you doing? It's his last will and testament. It means nothing while he's alive. They took that book of the law. They wrote it all out there. And then they put blood all over everything. Because something had to die for it to take effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, but then Jesus Christ came. Mm -hmm. Oh, our great high priest. Mm -hmm. Our perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Our perfect lamb. He came. <laughs> He offered himself, not only in our place, took our wrath, our punishment, our guilt, our shame yeah. on the cross. But then when he, when he did it, he said something very, very good. He said, it is finished. Amen. Oh, no more sacrifices need to be made. No more blood has to be shed. It's done. It is finished. You're forgiven once for all time through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible said we have better promises through Jesus Christ. We're in a better covenant through Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't have to go and confess our sins to a priest no more. We don't have to go and lay our hands on some animal and Call out all our sins before God and everybody else. Now, come on. The Bible says that now we can boldly go to the throne room of grace and find grace and mercy Hallelujah. in our time of need. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. praise God. Don't you know that's where Jesus is? Yeah. That's where God is. That's where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. You can go boldly before the throne of God, not Pastor James. Come on. Huh? Not the Pope. Huh? Come on. Not the President. Uh, hello, somebody. You can boldly go through the, to the throne room of grace. You can go to where God is Hallelujah. and find grace and mercy. I can't give it to you. I can preach and tell you about it, lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink. That's on you. Only God can give it to you. It says we have better, better, better you understand, as good as, and as awesome as Moses was, one of the first preachers, one of the first pastors in the Bible, as good and awesome as Elijah and Elisha was, as good and as awesome as King David was, they were still under the old covenant. They didn't have what we have today. They didn't have access the way we have access today. They had to bring the sacrifices. They had to do the cleansing. They had to work the process that God gave them or else, ooh, they burned that strange fire and they'd be struck dead like uh, Aaron's sons. Come on. They burned strange fire. They burned the wrong fire and the incense to the Lord and the, the, the glory of God, the anger of God, it lashed out and God. 
they had to take them and put their dead bodies outside the camp. And those were supposed to be priests. And they did it wrong. Nowadays, Jesus has done all the work for you. Come on, Jesus has done it all for you. And he said, if you'll just go to God in my name, I'll be right there with you. And if you ask in my name, oh, praise God, I'll get the glory and it'll be done. Amen. Come on. If we'll just cry out to Jesus, if we'll just call on the name of Jesus, if we'll just take a second and say, Jesus! Amen. He'll turn his face towards you. What is it, my son? What do you need? What's going on? Yeah. How can I be of service? I'm here to bless you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to be a father to the fatherless. I'm here to be a, a husband to the widow. I'm here to be a, a, a doctor to the sick. I'm here to be a savior to the lost. I'm here. What do you need? You can find it in Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise God. Do you know this Jesus this morning? For God has proven his love toward us right now. Right now. Right now he wants to prove his love to you. Yes. That while you're sitting in those seats, in your filthy, wretched, stinking sin, Christ already has died for you. He already paid the price for you. He's already done the work for you. The Bible says that it's a free gift. Salvation is a gift. The only part of getting saved you have to do is receive it. The Bible says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we will be saved. Oh, come on. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. Like a, like a fish in the water. You imagine if a fish cleaned itself before you caught it, that'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> Pulled the fish out the water, want no scales on it, it was already cleaned up, ready to go. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be crazy. But no, you come to Jesus this morning and let God clean you up. Amen. Amen. Let his word clean you up. Amen. Let his word wash you Oh, come on, that's what the Bible talks about, the washing of the water with the word. Let his word wash over you and cleanse you. He'll deal with whatever's going on in your heart. Yes. He'll deal with whatever's going on in your mind. Yeah. He'll call you out and say, hey, now, maybe you should not do that. Hey, now, maybe you should not address that way. Hey, now, maybe you should not say those things. Hey, now, maybe you should not think that thing. You say, Lord, I don't understand. Why is it wrong? Oh, well, oh, let me come over here and show you right here. This is what's going on. This is where it's at. Oh, just flip the page and, oh, that part's talking to you. There it is right there. Oh, huh. Didn't know you was in the Bible, did you? Oh, you're right there. Just read them pages. You'll see yourself. It's like a mirror. Oh, and it reflects God's goodness. Oh, but it also points out our mess. Mm, come on here. Whew. I've not seen a mirror yet that I didn't like. Except when I'm looking at the Word of God. Yeah. Oh, then I feel the conviction. And I feel the conviction. God points out my flaws and my sins. But you know why He does it? Because He loves us. That's right. Amen. He wants us to be more and more like Him every day. That's right. It starts with salvation. It starts with salvation. Are you saved this morning? Are you sanctified? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Oh, come on here. It's in Hebrews. I didn't get a chance to read it, but it's in Hebrews about being sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. We're in a better covenant with better promises, and right now the thing you need to do is to call on Jesus. Oh, son, give me some music, Chip, if you would get the light, sir. We're going to give an altar call. We ain't going to be able to get to the rest of them scriptures. Oh, praise God. Go home and read it. Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. Read the end of chapter 5 like what I gave you. Uh, Romans 5, 8 through 11. And read Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. It'll blow your mind.
The Bible says that the demons, they know God and tremble. My wife stood up here and told you it's not good enough to know God. Even the demons know God and tremble. That's straight from the scripture. The atheists know who God is, they just deny it. The Buddhists, the Hindus, they know who God is, they just choose not to follow him. And unfortunately, there's several Christian denominations that claim they're saved, sanctified. They probably stop right there. Because they know who God is, but they do not deny the power thereof. Well, oh, we ain't like that here this morning. If that's what you came looking for, was just a pat on the back, I'm sorry. You're a wretched sinner and you need Jesus. And that's the only way you're going to get saved this morning. So the first call goes out for salvation. Do you need saved? Do you know that you know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven when you die? That you're going to be with Jesus? That to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord? Or are you not sure? Is there that knot in your stomach right now? Is there that pit in your chest? Do you find it a little hard to breathe this morning when we call these things out? Are you going to heaven or are you going to spend eternity in hell? Because you're going to spend eternity somewhere. Christ has done the work for you. Why not accept it? I ain't saying try it. I'm saying accept it. Believe it. Receive it. Yeah. Start living in his ways and his wills and his promises. Lord, amen. The second call goes out for everything else. Salvation is first and foremost, it's number one. But you know, God didn't come just to save you. Oh, that was the first one. That's the biggest one. That's the best one of all. But he said he won't leave you nor forsake you. He didn't just say, all right, you're saved. See you when you die. <laughs> Nope. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'm here for you. Amen. He wants to bless you. If there's sin in your life, he wants to get it out. If there's something you ain't turned over to him, a, a hidden spot in your heart, he wants to get it out. He wants to let his light so shine in all of your body, in all of your heart, in all of your mind. And of course, he said that he is our great physician. Come on. We can call on his name this morning for whatever it is. He said he'll do it. That's what his word says. I ain't arguing with him. I pray in Jesus' name and let God do the rest. Right? It ain't my strength. It ain't my power. It's his spirit. Amen? Amen. Come on. So whatever you need this morning, the altars are open. If you want to pray by yourself, Come off to the side. Get things right with the Lord. If you need something from the Lord and want somebody to pray with you, come up here front and center. The call goes out. If you need saved, do not leave out of here today. That's right. In the same old mess you're in. Leave out of here today a new creation. Leave out of here saved. Leave out of here changed and new. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Get out of darkness. Amen. Because he's getting ready to call his church home. Come on, you want to be a part of that. Whatever you need, the altars are open this morning. Come and receive in Jesus' name.